In the past, you got to talk to a real person when you made a phone call. You have two new messages. Now we often find we have to talk to a machine and leave a phone message. Message one. So let me know if Thursday suits. Message two. Jimmy Moore here. Give us a call. Cheers. As Rita Kyo and Linda Cook tell us, people don't always get it right when they leave phone messages. I find when pe you know, like when people ring you, like um, they don't actually leave their number, and if you haven't got a call or ID on your phone, like you wouldn't know who it was. So I think that's a bad message, you know, when they don't leave their name or or their phone number, phone them back. I like them to leave it clearly, that I don't understand what, who the message was from. Sometimes you just can't avoid having to talk to a machine. So here are some tips from Linda and Rita on leaving phone messages. Don't start talking until you hear the beep. This is the really useful guide to words and numbers free phone line. If you would like a free student pack sent to you, leave your name and address clearly after the tone. Hello, um, I'm just wondering, could you send me your free learner pack, please? Make a note of what you want to say, so you don't forget anything important. And remember to speak slowly and clearly. My name is Pat Brennan. Give your name, give your address if you need to, and don't forget to spell any unusual words. My address is number 64, St. Malachy Road, that's M-A-L-A-C-H-Y Road, Glasnevin, Dublin 9. You don't have to give your own phone number unless you want them to call you back. That's brilliant, thank you very much. Bye bye. So, those tips again. Don't start talking until you hear the beep. Hello, I was just wondering, could you send me that free learner pack, please? Make a note of what you want to say and speak slowly and clearly. My name is Pat Brennan. Give your name and your address, and if it's needed, spell any unusual words. My address is number 64, St. Malachy Road. That's M-A-L-A-C-H-Y Road, Glasnevin, Dublin 9. You don't have to leave your own phone number unless you want someone to phone you back. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Bye bye. You may not like leaving phone messages, but the good news is, is that it gets easier. Yeah, I find it easier now to leave a message, you know, than it used to be. You know, just like, because it just says leave your message after the beep. And if you actually wait for the beep, you know, which a lot of people just go ahead and you end up with half of the message, you know. But like, I find it easy enough now to leave a message. Don't like doing it now, but <laughs> I do it. <laughs> well, if you'd like to know more about leaving telephone messages, there's a section in the workbook on page 91 that has some handy exercises. To get your free pack, you can free phone the number on your screen, 1-800-2020-65. That's 1-800-2020-65. Or you can visit our website, www.rug.ie. Well, often we come across situations where a little more confidence would make it less difficult for us to say what we want or how we really feel. If you find that you're the type of person who says yes, even though you want to say no, you might find this next piece a really useful guide. Irish people find it difficult to say no. Whether it's no to babysitting your grandchildren, giving a friend a lift to the station, or no to working late. Sarah, hello. I know you're due to leave now. We're down through the staff members and box office and wondering if you could stay just an extra couple of hours. I kind of make plans, Derek. I'm going to be really stuck. I'm going to really need an extra pair of hands. Can I make a quick call? Does that mean you can stay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. just let us ring your friend. Good, thanks. When you're in that kind of situation, you can be left feeling frustrated, resentful and upset. So what can you do about it? Being able to say no is all part of being more assertive. Anne Kelly McCormick runs classes and workshops on how to become more assertive. 
So I'd like to tell me what it is that you need to, to work on today. I work 39 hours a week and because we're a bit short staffed at the moment, I'm constantly being asked, oh sir, listen, we're stuck, can you stay back late? And you know, sometimes I don't mind, but it's getting to a stage where I can't say no because I just feel guilty and I'm letting the team down. Would it be helpful if I told you what the four different main behaviour types are? Yeah. Okay. Well, there's aggressive behaviour pattern, the passive behaviour, the indirect behaviour and the assertive behaviour. And just a couple of words on each of them. The aggressive behaviour, attack is the best form of defence. That is the tactic that aggressive people use. And when a person is behaving indirectly, they can ask you a question and there's a sting in the tail. You, you're not doing anything tonight, sure you're not. You won't mind staying back late, will you? A passive way of asking you to stay back would be, oh, look, I've been let down again tonight and none of the other girls came in, so you wouldn't mind, would you? The person is behaving assertively. They would say, I'm really sorry to have to ask you this again. I know I've asked you a number of times recently, but would you mind staying back tonight? I need another shift. Okay, a fun way to watch people's behaviour is when people are queuing. The aggressive personality is the one who jumped the queue. The indirect behaviour then, people will say to each other, You should be able to do that. Just say something. The um, passive person personality will say, Oh, it's not fair, I've been standing here for ages, queued and they're out to get in before me. The assertive personality then will hey, say, That's the end of the queue, man. You have to queue properly. Okay, whatever. When you first go into a situation, in any given situation, it can be very useful to understand the importance of body language and image. So things such as standing on your own two feet, your feet in line with your shoulders, which is comfortable, maintaining the eye contact, not smiling or scowling, if it isn't necessary to smile or to scowl. Also then to remember your breathing. Good breathing helps you cope in any difficult situation. The better way of saying no is to assertively say no. Be conscious of your body language, breathe, look somebody in the eye and you can actually say, I don't feel comfortable about having to say no, but nonetheless I'm saying no in the situation. It's also okay to check it out with them, how do you feel about that? So once they understood that you said no to the situation, not no to them, but you open it up and ask, you know, is there a compromise, there's another way we can work around this. Um, I'll meet you in about an hour, let's just say Spike O'Connell Street. Yeah? Grant. Alright, talk to you then, Bye, 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 bye. Sarah, hello. I know you're due to go home now, but I just want to ask you a really big favour. Uh, we're really short staff on Mox Office, so I just wondering if you could stay and just give us a dig out for a little bit. Yeah, I have plans. Um, I'm just meeting my auntie in about an hour, but what I can do is I can hang on for half an hour and I'll ring around and get you a few bodies in. And is that alright? Yeah, yeah no, that's fine. Any help would be appreciated. I'm not going to say no to that. Yeah. <laughs> alright, all right, no problem. I'll get on that straight away, okay? Thanks. No Bye. problem. Brilliant. Thanks a million. I owe you shit. More often than not, people find it difficult to say no because they're putting someone else's feelings before their own. The important thing to remember is that you're not rejecting the person you're asking, just what they're asking. And once you've said no once, the easier it will be to say it again. Margaret, talking there about being assertive, um, Buying and selling and bartering and swapping is still very much part of traveller culture, isn't it? It is, yes. It's very much part of it now. And do you see people doing deals a lot? Uh, yeah, a little. It mostly happens at fairs. Yeah. And would it be the most assertive person, the strongest personality wins in a situation yeah. like that? Yeah. <laughs> and to have much more confidence, I suppose. Is that something you come across, Rachel, on the courses, that um, people doing the courses in St Basil's may need to tailor it towards going to a fair or bartering and swapping and dealing? I, I suppose it's something we would have used as a role play. I actually teach personal development myself, so I'm very familiar with the different behaviours described. Um, we'd, we've also done role plays around, say, you're going to a pub and you're refused entry. You know, that would be a common issue for travellers, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, is that changing? It has to because of the law, which is wonderful. But in the past, if I was bringing the students out, I used to have to ring ahead and say, look, is, it's a traveller group. Is that a problem? Because I didn't want the day to be ruined for them. I didn't want it to be about that. I won't do that now. If we have a problem, I would take action around it because it's against the law as such. The interesting thing I think about travellers, particularly the young people, is they tend to be quite assertive because yeah. they have a great sense of belonging in their community, I think. Do you think we'll see a day where travellers are presenting radio and television programmes, Rachel? Oh, absolutely. 
a former student of ours who's now a primary health care worker has actually DJed on a, a, a radio show in Clendalkin a number of years ago and I'm sure that's going to happen more and more. The I remember a, a Radio 1 programme called On the Tubber a few years ago um, made by and for the travelling community and that mm. was a great success as well. Mm. Well, that's all we have time for today. I'd like to thank our guests for coming in. Thanks very much to Rachel Farrell and to Margaret Wall as well. Next time, we're going to be finding out how to read the 24-hour clock and getting some handy hints on travelling by rail. In the meantime, here are the contact details again to get hold of your free student workbook that goes with the series. For your free student pack and workbook, free phone one 800 202065 that's 1-800-2020-65. Or you can go online and visit www.rug.ie or write to The Really Useful Guide to Words and Numbers, Care of NALA, 76 Lower Gardner Street, Dublin 1.